Welcome to another Photoshop tutorial from tutorvid.com. This tutorial is going to show you how to edit a portrait and hopefully save it from an image like this where you have a strong harsh shadows from a flash or a light and bring it to something like this where the shadows are taken care of and the lightness is also improved. Alright, so the first thing we're going to take care of is the shadows on the background and to do that we're going to create an isolation around the model. So for that we'll need the wand tool so press W or click over here and then just click and drag on all the background here and then you can see I selected more than I wanted so then I can press the alt key and click where I want to unselect and just get a bit of a rough selection of what you want to isolate so that looks good enough for now you can see there's mistakes here but I'll deal with that in the next tool which is select and refine edge and so with this tool we're going to essentially do what we just did and we're going to tell Photoshop where it needs to look harder to find the proper edge. This image is a bit of a hard one to isolate because the hair is so similar to the background color but we'll do the best we can in here and then we can take care of it a little more afterwards as well. So I'm just going to go all the way around the hairline and tell Photoshop to look harder at that. And then a couple of the settings in here, you can feather it by a couple pixels, just so there's no hard lines. Smooth it maybe by one pixel, and I think that should be good. Press OK. And now to make our background look proper, I'm going to use a gradient tool. And so press the G key, or select gradient over here. And make sure you're on the solid color to solid color gradient default. And also on this first button here, there's different types of gradients you can draw, but we just want to straight one color to the next. And if you look down here, my colors right now are black in the foreground and white in the background. And I want to switch those to the two colors I'm going to use. So with your layer selected, go to the bottom and press the Alt button, which gives you this eyedropper tool. And press Alt and click. And that'll put that color in the foreground. And press the X button and that'll put that color in the background and then press alt and click on the top. So now we can see in the foreground and background we have the two colors from our image and now I'm going to create a new layer and draw that gradient start at the top and drag to the bottom and so we have our model more or less isolated on this background. Press ctrl D to deselect and now we can go in and double check all along the edge and make sure it doesn't look too cut out anywhere. You can press this eyeball over here to flip back and forth to make sure there's no little stray hairs that should be included that aren't. Here maybe there's a little missing bit. For that I'm going to create a layer mask. And then with the brush tool, the B button, I'm going to paint black. So take away some of this layer and paint back of the hair. If you're not sure how masks work, check out a tutorial on those. They're really useful. And all right, the bottom of the hair looks decent. And now to make this look just a little less isolated and cut out, I'm going to bring back just a touch of those shadows that were there. So I'm going to go to the opacity for this gradient layer and pull it back just a touch and you can see the shadows just start to appear and I'm going to keep them so it still looks like the model was shot in a room or in a studio but it doesn't have that really harsh shadow look alright so this image is still really too dark if we look at the histogram uh, it stops way over here so there's all this information here that could be white so I'm going to create a curves layer Go down and press the adjustment layer and go up to curves. You can't see mine, but I'm just clicking on the curves. And here again, you have your histogram in your curves, and there's nothing over here. So we have to bring up the right side so we have some whites and bright light areas. And then I'm also going to put a spot in here and bring up sort of the light areas in the face to bring, just make them a little lighter. And you can also see there isn't a whole lot of really dark dark so I'm gonna just bring that in a touch as well. If you click on this info tab 
If that's not showing, you can go up to Window and click Info. And here you can see the RGB values of the pixels currently underneath your mouse. So right now it is 244, 239, 227. And if this was a perfect gray, they would all be the similar. So uh, you can see it's a little bit red and a little bit green or not enough blue. So if I want to color correct this, it would be a lot easier in Camera Raw if this was taken as a raw file. We can also do it in Photoshop. So to color correct this image, I'm going to create a new curves layer. And if you click on this middle eyedropper tool, you can select somewhere in the image that's gray and it'll adjust these curves uh, so that it all becomes middle gray. If you see I select here, uh, it adds way too much blue. If I select on the bottom, uh, it looks a little better. I'm assuming that this wall is white and it could be a cream colored wall or a little bit of a pink wall. It's hard to tell, but if I select on the bottom, it gets fairly close to something that might be natural, although it looks maybe a little too red. But I'm going to keep that for now. And then on this layer, I'm just going to bring down the opacity to maybe halfway and find sort of a happy medium between this full powered color adjustment and what it was before. Another thing I like to do in portraits like this is bring down the saturation a little bit. I feel on indoor flash photos, colors easily get just a little bit too saturated and I like things a little bit calmed down. So I'll bring it down to maybe minus 25. And uh, I think it's still a little bit too dark. So I'm going to create another curves layer and bring up the lightness even more. I like to create multiple curves layers so that I can go back and see each individual change I made and just adjust that change. And I'm going to bring down the darks a little bit, giving it more contrast. That's another benefit of reducing the saturation is it allows you to up the contrast in the image a little bit without uh, blowing out the colors. All right, that looks pretty good. And another problem with uh, this photo was that the strong flash that you had created sort of hot spots on the model's face. So as a quick little fix for that, I'm going to click on our original layer one, press Control J to duplicate that layer. And then with a the brush, I'm going to press the B button, get a fairly large brush and make sure it's soft. You can select your brush settings here, hardness at zero size, uh, depending on your photo. I'm having an 80 size brush. Now again, with I'm going to use the color picker tool by pressing the Alt button and that just switches my brush to a color picker. And then I'm going to click on an area where I'm going to paint and my foreground color is changed to that. And then I'm going to bring the opacity down to 10%. You can use the slider up here or you can just press the one button for 10%. And then I'm going to paint just lightly in that area one or two times and then go to the other area and paint just on the bright spots. You can't see much of a difference, but if you compare the before and after, uh, you can see a fair bit of improvement. You can also paint a little bit under the eyes and lighten them up a little bit. Now if I hide this layer, you can see just a touch of the highlights disappear, making them a little bit more subtle, but making sure they're still there. Another thing I like to do for portraits is to make sure the eyes have good blacks in them. So I'm going to create another curves layer and pull down the blacks quite a bit so that the pupils are 100% black. And then here we have our layer mask already. So I'm going to press control I to flip all that white to black. And now if I paint with my brush, uh, white in here, I'm going to bring back the layer just for the eyes and make sure you bring the opacity up to 100% so you're actually painting. And I'll paint maybe just a little touch on the eyelashes too. One of the last things I'm going to do is crop this image. I think this image would fit well with a square crop. So holding down the shift key and using the crop tool which is over here or the C button. I'm going to make my crop. And one last little beauty retouch I did on the start image 
was I added another curves layer and increased the contrast quite a bit. I brought down the shadows and pulled up the lights. This is just going to be for the hair. Hair can usually stand to be fairly contrasty and still look natural. Just looks a little healthier when there's more contrast in it. So the same thing as the eyes, I'm going to press Control I on that contrast layer and then get my brush with a B and paint back with white on this layer, which just sort of brings out the hair a little bit. And that's it. Here's a before shot and here's what it looks like afterwards. And now I have a whole ton of layers here. If you want to make your image quite a bit smaller, you can flatten your image by pressing Control Shift E. Or if you want to come back at a later time and change any parts of your edit, it's a good idea to leave all these layers intact. And that's it. If you want to download this tutorial or check out more tutorials, head over to tutorbid.com.